Hello, Neil from Dagna Move, back again with Cataclysm, a Second World War for the second video in the 1935-36 to 36 part of the game. We are partway through the actions phase, tail end of the last video, the Germans were starting to spread out across the um, Scandinavian region, taking uh, diplomatic control of Sweden and Denmark. Uh, the Japanese still failing to make any inroads into China. The communists have passed a home front test and moved their political posture to collective security, meaning they will be able to diplomatically extend their reach a little bit more than they could do previously. And um, yeah, the, the allies are really not very aligned or the future allies are not very aligned. So straight then into the next chit. We could potentially interrupt as the um, I think it was the British and the French, but I can't remember exactly, so we'll just jump straight to the chip pool and see where we go. Um, and we have a French home front test. That is one dice and five or six. French are at wavering polit political stability, uh, which means they are okay if they fail, but they could be better. And they have a four, which means they have not past that test and their stability for their government drops down to unstable. One more level down and they will collapse. As that means it's very important now for the French to make some political um, attempt at shoring up their government. Basically, I think they've just spent so much time arguing with the British about what they're gonna do in a potential alliance that um, They've neglected to do anything else. Um, okay, so that was the democracy, or a democracy chit. The fascists or the communists could do something uh, in order to, uh, to in, as an interrupt, but I don't think they will right now. There is an, uh, a, a good argument to remove the Washington Naval Treaty as the Japanese, but we would provoke the Americans by doing that. And currently, um, the Americans are quite hamstrung by their inability to do anything politically. Uh, they've, they've really are stuck. Um, and so unless somebody provokes them, which is basically going to be the Japanese, um, they really can't do much at all. So that's an interesting decision for the Japanese because on the one hand, they really do need to do something because they've got to get some more resources. They, they've got to make so get out of their restricted area that they're in at the moment. But if they try and do it, by removing the Washington Naval Treaty and go sea bound, they will end up um, potentially with the, the Americans in the game proper. I think that was a long winded way of saying I probably won't do anything as a Japanese interrupt right now, but there's a bunch of other political actions we could try. Kind of limited really, unless we want to um, surprise attack somebody but we need to remove that treaty first. And the only people within reach are the Americans, so that would be a bit silly. Um, no, let's not interrupt. The Italians could interrupt. Not sure what they'd do right now. Maybe try and take control of somewhere diplomatically. Um, but we won't, we'll see how it goes with another chit. And we have an American offensive Oh man, there's not a lot they can do. There really isn't. I mean, they could possibly. Uh, there's no civil war, so they can't send anything to, to um, any aid to anybody. They, they really can't do much at all. I think the only thing they can really do right now is because there's no build either, they've got no forces left to build, they've built everything they can. Uh, therefore, the only thing really remaining is to deploy. But they can't deploy anything this side of the map. So they're looking at maybe moving a ship. But honestly, I don't think we'll bother. So I think that's just going to go straight back onto the um, uh, United States faction chart and move again. The the no interrupts from anybody. Uh, and we have another one with the same um, decision swiftly made. 
by me as the American player. Uh, next. We have a uh, fortress for the French, which is essentially the Maginot Line. Now, if we were to historically play, we place it about there in uh, Lorraine, um, but or the area of Lorraine as it's represented on the map. But we could place it in Provence. We could place it in Paris. Depends on what we want to do. Now, it's inevitable at some point Germany and or Italy are going to attack France. It's inevitable. There would be far more significant consequences if they, if somebody controlled Paris, which is here. So, on the assumption that either Lorraine or Provence will be attacked at some point in the next turn or two, let's place the Maginot Line slightly further towards Paris than we would have done, just to give it a little bit extra, um, you know defence, I guess. Not historical, but uh, this isn't strictly a historical game. Germany can't interrupt. The Japanese don't, again, don't really want to. And so we move on to the chip pull. The Italians don't want to either. And we have a British offensive. Now the British do have a few things they could do. They could deploy. They can't build. Um, Oh dear, the democracies and their military actions are not great at this point. Uh, hmm. If we were to deploy, we would have to move people from um, from the UK somewhere. There are restrictions as to how they can do that. We already have boats here. Um, maybe... We could send somebody over to the eastern map, but then there's that whole issue of sending people over there with that Washington Naval Treaty in, uh, in effect. Let's move... Oh, this, but this, with no civil war active, there's not a lot we can do until we actually start getting um, a bit more belligerent at the amount as the allies. Uh, okay, that's just going to go back on here. Um, okay, next up. At some point, all this tension will spill over, and there will be a significant change of pace but right now it's a little bit a little tiny bit kind of um, slow and steady to get going uh, particularly as I've just pulled out of the cup another offensive this time that's going to go on the reserve just in case um, we are going to keep that in reserve for something okay um, again nothing to interrupt so we have the next chip pull, which is a uh, Russian plane, and we'll pop that into Moscow, and then it gets a deployment over to Belarus, just there. Who knows, maybe the Russians will invade Poland before the Germans get a chance to. Um, okay, uh, no interrupt, Germany can interrupt, so that's going to be next chip, I think. And we have uh, a German army. Oh, okay, Germany. Let's see what we can do with Germany. Um, yeah, let's just build up in readiness to invade something. I'm tempted to pop it in Berlin, take Czechoslovakia by force, even if we can't take it by um, diplomacy. Uh, gives us a good launching point for Poland then. But the stressor front may prevent me from attacking um, Czechoslovakia. Uh, that's the agreement between the... Uh, yep, technically speaking, uh, technically speaking, there is uh, interest there for the Italians because they control Austria currently, believe it or not. Therefore, we won't be able to attack Czechoslovakia at any time in the near future. So I'll just pop that into... Um, 
uh, the uh, I think it was that one. Can't quite remember, but I'll pop it there just in case. Uh, no, actually, I do think it was that way around, wasn't it? Okay. Um, next chit. And we have another military offensive for the British. Oh, that's just going to go straight over here. Okay. Um, next one. Just to note, the stress of front is applicable up until the point either Germany and Italy are allied, France and UK are allied, or uh, there's a, uh, a war, essentially. Right, okay. Um, let's draw the next chit. Uh, that's another Amer uh, German military. Um, this time it's going to have to go somewhere else. So we'll pop it in Berlin uh, and then deploy it over to um, Silesia because we're actually at stacking limit for the Ruhr right now. Uh, okay. Um, next, chit. So the French and the, the French and the British. They could try to that do that alliance again. I think that would make sense. But how does that status quo get removed? I can't remember. Okay, um, the status quo gets removed basically when somebody goes to mobilization on the fascist or communist side and the combined victory point total of Germany and Italy is greater than the combined point total of France and the UK or any of them become belligerent. What I have just noticed, and this is a bit of a mistake, um, is that the, the allies cannot get resources from their colonies until that status quo mark has gone. So it's only the home areas, which means we've one of the reasons we've had so many offensives come through is because um, I took too many at the start of the turn, basically, which was last time. So um, won't worry about that for now, but if any British or French offensives comes up, we'll put them straight back out of play. Um, okay, good to know that for next time. Right, uh, next chip then. So we have a, a, an offensive for the Japanese. Now that is a valid offensive. So the offensive will be to attempt to build, or uh, well, just to build or spend it for a build, and we will build that army again um, in the hope that we can um, invade somewhere successfully. And we'll put it into Manchuria again, first into Tokyo, then across into Manchuria. The Soviets. Mm, they're quite happy doing the thing. They won't inter well, they can't interrupt right now. No point in the British or the French doing anything just yet, so much chit. Uh, home front test for the US. 2D6, 5 plus, and that's easily passed. Uh, we do get a deployment with that, I think, but there's nothing to, to move around right now for the Americans. Um, French flag. Okay, so they're going to have to do something politically, and I think it could well be worth trying to gain some foothold in Benelux, maybe. Although we would have to reduce any role by one, but we can try it, right? Or we could, because we've got the spare flag, we could just do that alliance again. So the, the British will need to remove their flag, and we will. Roll a single d6 and hope we get a 5 or a 6. And that's a 2. So that's again a failed alliance from those two. Because um, even with the 2 there, that still wouldn't be the required 5. So that's yet another cube in the um, failed political actions box for the, for the um, French. Now the challenge is, I mean, I'd say it's a challenge, it's a bit of a pain really more than anything. Uh, if I do a different political action, I have to remove all these cubes. 
in French. So if I was to try to increase commitment or to do some maneuvers or apply some pressure or anything like that, we would need to remove all of those um, those those die, those cubes and all those DRMs. So, but anyway, um, next chip. German flag, German flag, onto the reserve track, but now, next up, we have, actually, do you know what, I've just realised with the civilian status of the Americans, they shouldn't have done that. Um, home front test. Gosh, there's so many little rules and ifs and buts and maybes with this game. Um, okay, um, that's one of those ones we'll just put straight to one side um, because of my error with the number of resources. Um, here we have the Italian home front. Well, they will need to do a home front check because they are um, at rearmament. Um, and that's going to be two, just a one dice, and they need to get a five or a six. That's a four. Okay, so they are moving from steady down to wavering. They could deploy. There's nothing to deploy ready for them there right now. So we will just take the next chip. Um, British home front check. They don't do it because they are civilian. Uh, that goes on the turn track. The Japanese do though, so they will roll two dice. And they pass, that's good um, for them anyway. They do get a free deployment, now oh, that might be interesting because they could deploy an army over to um, Korea, ready to do another invasion of China. Okay, uh, no one can do much about that right now S from a interrupt point of view. So the next chip is a Japanese offensive. Which we will spend to try and take a bay again. So this time we will pop the land units in there, both land units, some support again. Um, and it's the same as before, three dice against two, hoping for basically anything except the communist win from a Japanese point of view. Okay, rolling the dice. And we have, oh wow, same thing, they take a loss. This time they retreat back to where they, they originated from, or we'll say uh, the, the, the Chinese one, uh, and then the Korean one was eliminated. Um, uh, there's no stability test, no flags because of the uh, same position still as last time. Okay, next, um, next chit. Wow, they, those Japanese really are struggling. Uh, to do anything in China. <sighs> Gonna have to break that naval treaty soon and just try and go the go around the, the Pacific route. Okay, let's see, have a think though. Um, one of those offensives which will go straight onto the track there. We had about three resources too many this time, the British. Um, uh, and then we have civil war. Okay, no civil war. But the the um, Chinese communists in, in uh, the victors of the Chinese civil war will attempt to expand. And I just need to double check the rules for how that happens. Okay, it's just a straight up um, diplomacy check. Um, so the Chinese will uh, there's no modifiers. Um, there's nothing else like that. Basically, they'll all, um, any army will just attempt to expand to a nearby area. So um, it would make sense for the um, just to go one, two, and three, I suppose, because this one 
can't experiment into anything just yet. So starting with the army in Hebei, uh, they fail. The, the army giving it again Su. They succeed. So I have to double check this, but I think we just place an army there, which I'll do temporarily. Um, and then the um, Sichuan uh, attempt, sorry, the Guanxi attempt, uh, it's a fail. When they expand, they, you just add another army like I did, so there's no provocation. But that's that's important to know. What it does mean, though, because the communists control these two regions, they now get a plus one to any diplomacy attempt into uh, Gansu. Okay, we are running through the time in this video. We haven't drawn a single crisis marker yet. I mean, we've got a little ways to go with the turn. Uh, let's keep going and see how we do. Um, the Japanese have an army, which I'll place into Tokyo and then deploy into Korea. Next chit, nothing to, nothing politically can be done by the, the Soviets in terms of interrupt the other, the democracy powers may as well keep what they've got there, the Italians. Oh, it'd be a long-winded faff to get them to do the um, Abyssinian adventure and they're a long way off being belligerent. So, uh, hmm, interesting. Let's take another chip on our German home front test, meaning there'll be three dice aiming for a fives. And they pass. Um, they're kind of, actually, they're currently at um, low stability, uh, wavering stability. They should probably try to get their stability up at some point, but they can't do that yet. The French, though, can. They're unstable, which is which is worse. So 1d6 in the hope that the uh, government in France can shore itself up. And they pass. So that will go to a, a wavering status for the French. Did the Germans or Italians want to interrupt? Ah, oh, do you know what? Do you know what? They can't declare war right now, anybody. So the Germans, man, the Germans really need to start getting to mobilization. Um, and that would give them so many more offenses and things like that in order to, you know, give it a bit of oomph behind their, um, expansion plans but right now that would not give them the best bang for their buck in terms of resources okay let's see how we get on with the next chip roll. and that's a crisis markup let's roll 2d6 uh that peacetime so we have a 5-3 on the peacetime table and a 5-3 on the peacetime table is uh, Chinese resistance. Powers with a Cuban ungarrisoned Chinese country. No Chinese army must perform an effectiveness check for each. If the check fails, remove the cube and retreat land units. So the Chinese areas for the purposes of the game are the darker yellows rather than the um, uh, sort of more, more beige colour of Manchuria and Mongolia. So in this instance, that doesn't apply. But now that we have that that marker out, we can slowly but surely start to see the end of the turn coming. Uh, right, an Italian army. Let's pop those um, in Italy. There is an argument for the French for the Italians and the Germans to ally right now. Can't interrupt to do that just yet because it was a fascist chip or just then, but if they can ally, the stressor front goes, they're much more free to operate in Central Europe. Decisions, decisions. Okay, next chip is a Japanese political flag. We've got one on the track already. Um, I 
they can't do any diplomacy against Mongolia. They could try to diplomatically take somewhere in China. Can't do it anywhere with an army, but you potentially could try it in um, Jahar. Alternatively, alternatively, we could, the, the, the um, I don't know what the benefit of this would be, <laughs> but we could do, try to do an alliance with, with Italy or um, Germany, or we could do a military action. Be a terrible shame to waste this action. So I think we'll try to do it in Jahar. Uh, which is two dice and five plus. I don't think there's any, I don't believe there are any um, restrictions on us doing that because of the restricted terrain. But I just want to double check if there's any extra restrictions for diplomacy in China. Nothing obvious, so I will roll for diplomacy in Jahar. Unsurprisingly, that failed. Well, not surprising given the number of times they've tried to invade them recently. Um, okay, so um, diplomacy done for the Japanese. Not many more chips left. Um, I think the Germans and the Italians do want to ally, but they can't because it's actually a fascist chip, wasn't it? So the next one out of the cup is the crisis marker. Second one, the end of the turn is nine, and we have a six one on the peace table. Um, and a 6-1 is Polish non-aggression. A power with a cube in an ungarrison in Poland must perform an effectiveness check, removing the cube if it fails. Poland isn't garrisoned by France right now, so we have to roll a 6 plus, or sorry, a 5 or a 6, and failed, meaning the French lose control of Poland, uh, losing a VP for the democracies, and of course their own VP. Now the Italians have two, the Germans have two, Britain and France, I think only have one. Oh no, two, three. Uh, what's the rule for that democracy um, status quo? Okay, greater than the combined total of the UK and France. So that is a combined total of four for uh, Germany and Italy. They're both on two. Two cubes here and two cubes. France has one. They have two. Right, the status quo has gone. Um, that is going to give so, so much more flexibility to um, the Allies and they will gain a flag immediately for that. So the, when I say the Allies are not allied yet, they're future Allies. Um, the uh, Brits and the French both gain a flag. Um, do the Americans gain one? That's an excellent question. Yes. The Americans gain one as well because they're a diplomatic power. Right, that's going to be huge for the um, democracy powers to do stuff. Um, I believe that means they also get a flag automatically in the admin phase of the next turn. Um, what I'll do now though is I'll, well the Americans can't, but um, the French and the British can definitely place their flags on the track. The Americans can't because they are uh, uh, they have a, a blocked reserve track. We'd have to discard the, the offensive that's already there. That might be useful to keep next turn because right now I'm going to um, use this flag 
um, but I'll put it in the cup first um, in the hope that it is actually drawn this turn um, we will use that to move to rearmament for the Americans to give us a ton more stuff to build and um, get rid of some of those restrictions from being a civilian power as well. Cool. Okay, near the end, um, we have another crisis. And that's the third of four. So we'll be on certain death. Oops, I don't know what I've done with the turn track there. There we go. Making a mess, making a mess. Um, so that was crisis. So we have a 4-1. And the 4-1 is uh, enemies of the state. Oh. Reduce the Soviet Union's effectiveness by one. Okay, till the end of the turn though. So that's not quite so bad given that the turn is very nearly finished. Um, a few more things. Uh, okay, we have the American flag. So let's use the American flag to rearm. Um, yeah, let's do that. Although, with the number of special rules around how the democracies can work together, I'm just going to check before I do something wrong again. No, I don't think there's a restriction. Now that we're not bound quite so much as we were by that status quo. So in that case, we'll just roll two dice and hope for a five or a six. I've got a six. That means they do rearm. Um, and we can give them six different things to build. Okay, we have for the Americans um, a naval upgrade marker, enabling us to transfer some things to carrier fleets, two regular fleets, a tank upgrade, infantry, and a, an air force. We would have to upgrade to a strategic air force to do on that side that it was on there originally. So they all sit here. Now, we do have a few restrictions on what we can do with those still because we're not allied with anyone. We can't ally with anyone until we put Lend Lease into effect. Um, but we can build some things and, and yeah, when the time comes, we can build some things. <laughs> not right now, sadly, um, but it's there. It's um, potential at the moment. Okay, just a few more counts in the cup. Drawing one at random. And that is a military offensive or an offensive for the Americans. That's just going to go straight onto the back onto the card um, because, again, I'm not entirely sure whether I, oh, I didn't do the resources right at the beginning. Don't think it affected the Americans because they don't have any colonies, but there's nothing great to do anyway. Um, okay. Just a couple more to go, and that is that fourth crisis marker. That is the end of the game. Um, I just double check to make sure I resolve that. I think I probably do. Um, nope, nope, we don't. Good job I didn't resolve that. So that's it. Game is over, for this turn at least. Um, the only remaining thing in the cup is a Soviet flag, which will go back onto the relevant um, production holding space. The flags and everything will come off the reserve box onto, again, onto their relevant spaces. Um, and then everything goes into the cup and we start again next turn. Okay, so that is everything. Um, some thoughts just before I dive into the next turn. Main thought being, with the status quo lifted, we have a bit more to do as the democracies now. Uh, the Japanese are going to have to get rid of the naval treaty. They're just banging their heads against a brick wall in China. The communists are buying their time. That's probably the best we can say. Things are slowly but surely um, building to a head um, more slowly than surely right now, but um, as you'll see as we progress through the 39, sorry, the 37, 38 turn, things will pick up ahead of steam now that we can um, do more politically as the democracies. Cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.